Hi, I'm Scott with Flex Your Rights. We've been getting a lot of thoughtful emails from you guys lately, and so I've got my thinking cap on this evening. No zebras were harmed in the making of my thinking cap, but we'll talk about animals later. Today what I want to talk about is marijuana. Again, I know. Now, you know Flex Your Rights isn't a marijuana legalization organization. We're just here to educate people about their constitutional rights. But in light of the measures that have passed recently in Colorado and Washington, we've been getting a lot of questions from you about sort of how, how do these changes in the law affect your Fourth Amendment rights in, in some of the common kinds of police encounters that you might get into. And as I'm always pointing out, the understanding of how marijuana laws might or might not affect you is something that matters not just for people who smoke marijuana, but also for really anybody who might find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. The reality is that just about anybody can become a marijuana suspect if you're in the wrong situation or the wrong place. And not only because of police perhaps profiling, not only because of the way that you look or the neighborhood you live in, but also because marijuana itself is so common in our society that a little bit of pot or pot paraphernalia could just be left in your car or left on the sidewalk next to you. I mean, it's just the, the number of situations that I've heard of where innocent people got dragged into the war on pot is so extensive I could not even describe it. So let's proceed. The question of how marijuana legalization affects your constitutional rights is something that I can really only speculate about, hence the thinking cap. So the first question that comes to my mind is sort of what is probable cause? Here's this big legal standard that has so much to do with the level of police authority in a given situation and it's the thing that can protect you or destroy you depending on the circumstances you find yourself in. So what is probable cause? Probable cause is evidence that would lead a reasonable person to believe that there's a crime going on and that the suspect present is responsible for that crime. So in the case of, of marijuana, when a police officer smells it, boom, probable cause. There's marijuana around here. Someone was burning it. This guy, he's reeking of it. He's got baggies on the floor of his car. Probable cause. We're tossing this car. And in that situation, it doesn't matter if you refuse the search. And then the police officer doesn't even need a warrant uh, necessarily in most situations when he smells marijuana. And so that's why the plain smell exception to the warrant requirement is such a notorious example of, of police authority in our material. It's it's a, a point that comes up over and over again. Well, you know, if you say you don't consent to a search, police can just claim that they smell marijuana. So it's a huge issue and one that, that we get questions about all the time. But it's something that just gets flipped on its head the instant marijuana isn't illegal anymore, right? Think about that. If marijuana isn't illegal, then the smell of marijuana doesn't lead a reasonable person to believe that there's a crime going on. For all you know, the smell that you're smelling is just the smell of an adult legally enjoying under an ounce of cannabis in the safety of their home. So you know, it does kind of flip the script, doesn't it? Now, in Colorado and Washington, you're not permitted to possess more than an ounce of marijuana, but I've never met a police officer who could detect through olfactory, you know, nasal observation techniques the difference between one ounce and three and a half. So I really don't see how the plain smell exception to the warrant requirement holds up in the case of a suspected marijuana situation when adult possession of marijuana under an ounce is no longer a criminal infraction. It just, just doesn't work for me. In Massachusetts, where marijuana was decriminalized back in 2008, the courts have ruled similarly. And so I expect that in Colorado and Washington, in time, we'll see the same policies follow. Now, on the roadways, things are going to be a little bit different. Obviously, it's still illegal to drive while intoxicated in those states. So if you're sitting there puffing a blunt behind the wheel, you're begging for trouble. If you're walking around the neighborhood or in a school zone smoking pot, well, that's still a crime. And it's also disrespectful to your neighbors. And so ultimately, you still want to protect yourself by being careful and not pushing your luck too much. If you piss the cops off enough, you know what happens. But at the end of the day, I think that 
this can really create a significant shift in the way that Fourth Amendment rights are, are applied in those states. And obviously efforts are underway to expand reforms to marijuana laws to other parts of the country, and the voters seem increasingly willing to support that. So as far as Flexor Rights is concerned and the information we provide, I think there's going to be a really pretty significant impact on some of our materials that, that results from these, these changes in the laws. And for me, as someone who's followed this for, for such a long time, it's fascinating to see because you you, you look at what's happening and you think about it and it's like, how did we get here? And I think the answer is in part that the courts have bent over backwards to approve police searches under almost any, any situation, you know, that we defer to the judgment of law enforcement in all of these instances. But over and over again, the rationale that's used to waive Fourth Amendment rights in the case of a, of a drug-related police search is that these substances are illegal and you have to get them. And so the instant that the substance itself ceases to be illegal, all of these tools that police and courts have collaborated to, to develop for themselves, all of those tools suddenly fall apart and it creates a, a whole new playing field. And so you can bet that at Flex Your Rights, we'll, we'll do our best to follow that and keep you up to speed on, on how all of this plays out. I think it's going to be a fascinating thing to watch and, and I hope you'll stay tuned to, to watch it unfold along with us. As always, you can check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. We have our wonderful full-length instructional videos. We have a lot of shorter clips and video blogs and other interesting things for you to check out. So please, uh, please watch them all and pass them along to your friends and neighbors and family. And for those of you who can afford to, we really appreciate your support through the website at flexorights.org. We can send you hard copies of our, our instructional videos. And we also have these great I Don't Consent to Searches t-shirts available through the website as well. It's the only place to get them. So check us out there at flexorights.org. Thanks so much and be safe out there.